Hi everyone, so this video is going to be about the best and worst MAC products, in my opinion obviously, and I'm also going to be sharing with you a few dupes for famous MAC products, because I feel like, on YouTube especially, everyone seems to be obsessed with MAC, and I'm not so anymore. Um, I did go through a phase, probably four years ago, kind of three years ago, where I was really, really MAC obsessed. I wanted everything that they did, and I knew everything about it. Now I don't really do that. I'm not overly fussed about new collections and that kind of thing, and I tend to just pick the products that I know that I like. But obviously I haven't tried all MAC products. I actually haven't tried any MAC um, concealers and that kind of thing, just because the they never really appealed to me and there's quite a few MAC products I haven't tried but from the ones I have tried I'm going to talk you through what I think are the best and what I think are the worst and I'm going to start with base products so two foundations. The first one which I think is the worst MAC product is the Mineralize Satin Finish Foundation. Now I've got this in NW35 and what this basically is is a foundation that I bought because I thought it was going to be like another MAC foundation which I love which is MAC Face and Body. I thought it was going to be a little bit similar to MAC Face and Body. That was what the girl at the counter told me and it wasn't. It's very very sticky. It has glitter particles in it so it doesn't look natural on the skin and it's one of those foundations that just sits on your skin and is absolutely there, visible to the naked eye and if you touch it your skin feels sticky, it doesn't set onto the skin and it's just a really really horrible product. Sometimes your opinions on products can change obviously, kind of if your skin changes and that kind of thing, but I didn't get on with this and when I searched reviews no one I could see really got on with this. So I really really don't like this and it is one of the worst foundations in my opinion. Then, moving on to a more positive note, a foundation that I do really love is MAC Face and Body Foundation. I've got this in the shade, in the shade C4, and this is a really, really lovely foundation. It's very, very unusual, there's nothing like it. It gives the most natural, radiant, luminous finish, and it's the type of foundation, I think, that does look better if you have great skin to begin with. It's a very good foundation if you're young and you just need kind of like a little bit of coverage or maybe if you're a more mature lady it's great because it really adds luminosity and shine to the skin but not in an oily way it just makes your skin look really juicy and healthy and beautiful and it's very very easy to apply it's very runny it's got a very kind of water like texture because it's a water based foundation you can use it on legs on a night out it makes your legs look flawless really kind of shiny and perfect and you get a good amount of product it's the kind of not the cheapest i think it's around 20 pounds but you get a hundred and how much do you get? I think it's like 120 mils, yeah, 120 mils, as opposed to your standard foundation, which is 30 mils, so you get a lot for your buck, and it's a really, really lovely foundation, beautiful finish. I've done a full demo and review of this, which I will link in the down bar for you to go and have a look at, because it's a lovely, lovely now foundation. Now moving on to blushes, and I actually had a customised MAC blush palette that somehow got lost when we moved to this house. You know how things just miraculously kind of vanish when you're moving? That was what happened, so I have actually only got two here and this one is one that I've kind of fallen in and out of love with and the reason for it is the kind of texture of it it's a sheer tone blush which explains it and the thing that's great with MAC is the fact that they have so many different finishes so the finish is kind of self-explanatory it's a sheer tone so it's not going to be overly pigmented the color is pink swoon which is just a kind of gorgeous bright um, bubblegum pink type of color but my issue with this is it is very very lightly pigmented and the best way I've found to apply it is if you apply it with with a kind of contour brush it works really well if you try and apply it with a regular blush brush you're not going to get much color payoff so I wouldn't say it's the worst but it's definitely a product that you have to kind of play around with as are some of the products that I'm going to mention in a minute they're products that you need to kind of play around with and it's more difficult to get them to work for you a product that I do really really like is the MAC cream blushes this one is in something special and it's just a kind of peachy salmon colour. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now, I don't know how well you can tell because um, the lighting's a little bit bright, but it's a really lovely blush. It's very 
sheer when you first put it on and it's not the type of blush that works well with fingers I found, it's the type of blush that you need to use a brush with. The brush I use with it is the Real Techniques Contour Brush but you need to kind of get a lot of product on it and then just kind of dab it onto your cheeks and it does give a really pretty finish. It's not greasy at all. I wouldn't say it dries to a matte finish but it dries to kind of like a, not powdery either, it dries to kind of a very pretty, very sort of fresh finish and it lasts a long time on your skin as well. Considering my skin's oily, it lasts a fair amount of time on me, so it should last on So next, time. we're moving on to eye products. And eye products are something that MAC do really, really well. But something that I don't think they do particularly well is this eyeliner. And this was from a collection, I can't remember what collection it was, but it's called I Get No Kick. And it's just a kind of pale, shimmery, champagne -y nude colour. And I'm wearing it in my inner tear duct area today, although I'm not sure how well you can see but it is quite pigmented and it's quite creamy but because of that it doesn't last on your waterline at all but a MAC eyeliner that does last really well on your waterline is their retractable eyeliners I can't remember off the top of my head what they're called but I used to use this eyeliner for years and it was a black one I used to wear it on my upper lash line and I think it was called something like graphic or something like that. I used to wear it for years and years and years. I'll put a little annotation here to what it's called. But my mum swears by it. She says no other eyeliner lasts as long and I love that one. I don't use it anymore just because it's not really the type of product that I choose now but it is a really really lovely product. Then some other great MAC products are MAC eyeshadows. Now this is my MAC palette and I'm not going to talk too much about what shadows I've got in here because I've done a video about that already and I don't want to just drag this out any longer but I will link that video in the down bar for you to go and have a look at. But basically MAC eyeshadows are amazing. I think they're better than Urban Decay because for me Urban Decay, as lovely as the colours are, do tend to have quite a bit of fallout with the shimmery colours. MAC does not have any fallout, they're lovely. The only ones I don't particularly like are ones sort of like this which one here which is tempting because I feel like it's a little bit chalky that's not my absolute favourite and <clears throat> some really unusual colours as well by MAC that I love are Antiqued which is gorgeous and today I'm actually wearing Naked Lunch and um, Sable so Naked Lunch on the lid and Sable in the crease and it's just a really pretty really easy to wear eye and they're just beautiful quality they're really buttery and soft and not powdery or chalky in any way shape or form so I really really love MAC eyeshadows then some more MAC eye products that I love are MAC paint pots and I have repurchased this over and over again I've probably gone through about four of them and it's the MAC paint pot in Bear Study which is just a shimmery champagne -y nude colour great all over colour and it keeps my eyeshadow in place like nothing else nothing else can keep my eyeshadow like this except for these dupes which are the Maybelline 24 hour colour tattoos this one is in on and on bronze and this is permanent taupe so the shades don't match and MAC definitely definitely do better shades but in terms of texture they are really really similar and um, these ones are about £13 I think and these are £4.99 so great difference in price and they're just as good I just wish Maybelline would up the ante with the colours that they've been producing because MAC definitely do then another colors. thing that is mega famous on YouTube is MAC brushes and shock horror I'm actually not the biggest fan of MAC brushes I don't know what it is but all the ones that I have had have shared really badly and it includes the one right here which I do really like but it does shed which is the MAC 182 Kabuki I use this to apply powder over my foundation and it is a really nice brush it's very soft but I'm going to have to put it out there and say that I think that the Real Techniques brushes are nicer than MAC brushes and I know people are going to totally disagree and even some of the really famous MAC brushes like the 187 and some of the eye brushes I just felt like were kind of a little bit not worth the hype so I actually gave those away to a friend of mine and um, she told me that she thought they were a little bit scratchy as well so I have noticed as well with MAC brushes that they're not all the same quality sometimes you can get really nice soft ones and then you can buy the same brush and it's a little bit bristly 
so I'm not sure what's up with that, but definitely I think MAC brushes are a little then bit Then in terms kind. of other MAC products, MAC lip glosses are a product that a lot of people on YouTube, when I first started watching YouTube videos, were always talking about, and I purchased a couple, and I have to say, they're not my absolute favourites. I feel like they're just very sticky, and for example, these ones right here are the MAC Dazzle glasses, so we've got um, Sugar Rimmed and Baby Sparks. So Baby Sparks is the pink one, Sugar Rimmed is the nude one. I'm wearing Sugar Rimmed over the top of my lipstick right now. But very, very glittery, which is nice if you kind of like that kind of thing. But they're very, very sticky. I don't like the fact they have the little brush applicator because it makes it streaky. And um, they're just definitely not a very great lip gloss in my opinion. Another really, really famous one is this lip gloss right here, which is Max Underage Lip Gloss. Slightly pervy name, but um, when I first started watching YouTube videos, it was all the rage. Lollipop26 always was talking about it. And it's a very milky, creamy, pigmented, opaque lip gloss. So you can see right there, it's basically white. It kind of gives you that washed out, milky, porn star look, which is good if you like that kind of thing. Um, and I know a lot of people do, but for me personally, it's just not a great colour choice. And then another one that I do actually like is their lip gloss in Electric Fuchsia, which is this bright purple colour, really pigmented, really pretty, and just really unusual. You wouldn't think that a colour like that would be very flattering on, but it is really pretty on the lips, and it's not too sticky. But my all-time favourite MAC lip gloss has been um, part of a collection that has been and gone and you can't get it anymore so it's limited edition but it was part of the colour crafted collection and it's in the shade Miss Marble. It looks like this and it's just your perfect pale kind of your lips but better colour and it's very creamy, not sticky, nicely pigmented, it has a kind of doe foot applicator which I much prefer and it just looks fantastic on the lips and I really really don't want mine to be all gone. I've had a couple of these which I bought when I first got it as backups and this is my last backup so I'll be very very sad when this is I've all also gone. got a couple of lipstick dupes for you right here and the first one is a dupe for Max Creme de Nude because as I said it's a nice lipstick it just doesn't look good on me and the dupe for this is Gosh Darling which is a very famous lipstick as well Gosh is a little bit less more less um kind of peachy toned and a little bit nuder but they're very very similar and they give you that kind of washed out nude lip effect so if you like that kind of thing definitely check that out because they are good dupes then some other ones that are great dupes are the Then another one that is a great dupe is the number seven lip gloss in Coral D lipstick. Sorry, in Coral Dream and Max Ravishing lipstick. Ravishing is a really gorgeous lipstick. This is what they look like next to each other. They don't look that similar on, in the pot, but when you swatch them, you'll see they're very, very similar. The number seven one's the lower one. It's a little bit kind of pinkier rather than oranger but they're very very similar on the lips and the number seven one is obviously a fraction of the price because MAC lipsticks are very expensive and then last but not least we have a Revlon lipstick which is a great dupe for a limited edition MAC lipstick which was called Lollipop Loving which I don't particularly like just because of the formula I don't really like the what formula is this? Glaze formula, because they're just not very pigmented. But it's a very good dupe for a very good dupe for it is the Revlon Peach is it Peach Parfait. You can even see in the pot they're very, very similar. The Revlon one does look a little bit darker, but on the lips they're really, really similar. They're both not overly pigmented, but I actually prefer the formula of the Revlon one. So it's those ones right here very very similar they're the best dupe in my opinion they're practically identical but i hope you enjoyed this video if you've got any other kind of requests for these types of videos maybe for other brands then definitely let me know and don't forget to thumbs up if you liked it and leave me a comment and i'll see you next time bye